Hello, everybody. I'm so excited. We have a special guest today, Taylor Westergaard from Evolving Money. And Taylor, I'm really excited for you all because this woman is going to save your bacon. Like, no joke. Like, so I'm going to let her um, talk a little bit about what you do. And I'd love, I'd love everyone to hear kind of how you even came upon doing it. Awesome. Yeah, that mean, yeah. So yes, uh, I'm Taylor. I am a financial coach, so I help people with the budgeting, saving, debt management side of personal finance, the day-to-day -day stuff. Also the emotional side of finance and how managing our stress, anxiety, and worries about money. I don't know what you're talking about. That doesn't <laughs> yeah. exist. That doesn't exist. <laughs> no one's experienced that before. <laughs> And so uh, I got into this because I, you know, I started working as a financial advisor, working with, uh, you know, lots of millionaires, like ultra wealthy households and managing their investments and all that stuff. And just the thing that called to me, though, was helping just like normal people feel organized and confident with their finances so that they can have more of an effect on their family, on their world, on their society, like that rip, that ripple effect of good financial health, I got to see as I was working with these ultra high net worth households that I wanted to help more people attain that kind of that level of financial security, maybe not like the ultra high, right, but like normal amount of financial security. And, um, and so that's why I do what I do. I think I, I also just wanted to merge um, psychology and numbers. That was like what I was passionate about when I was going into college. And so I uh, found financial coaching and that's how we landed here. <laughs> that is so cool. So how long has your business been going? Like how long have you branched out on your own? So it has been two years uh, for Evolving Money, which is crazy. <laughs> so awesome. I'm so proud of you. It's been such a fun journey and the amount of people who have trusted me with their finances. I mean, I can't thank them enough for that trust. And it's been, it's been cool to see what people accomplish. Yeah. It's funny. Because I, I feel like most people, when they think about what you do, there's like this hyperventilation mode, like, like, cause it can be really, really debilitating mm -hmm. when you're in debt or when you, you're living just paycheck to paycheck right. and you just can't breathe. Right. You get to help people breathe. You Yes. Yes. That exactly. is so amazing. <laughs> it's such a rewarding, isn't it rewarding? Like. Helping people become liberated. It's it is amazing to see. I mean, people have. I mean, my I don't make people cry. It's not what I'm in the business to make people cry. <laughs> However, it is something that once you do feel that relief, it can yeah. be incredibly emotional, and it's yeah. cool to be able to witness and also encourage that kind of transformation. Mm -hmm. I think it is funny that um, I am very like, you know, I have to. I run a business where people are not excited to meet with me, and I think that's. <laughs> Especially in the beginning. Yes. <laughs> like uh, the, those first calls, it is yeah, it is nerve wracking. It's intimidating, and it can be really stressful. However, I do become their favorite meetings and their favorite yes. people to talk to because honestly, that's how I got into this though. So I started working in um, personal financial planning degree, uh, which is very you know specific niche. And one of our assignments was to go uh, receive financial coaching for ourselves. Like we needed to be on the other end. Mm. And I was like, well, that absolutely makes sense. So I went to go get financial coaching. And at the time I was a student stressed out about money, um, stressed out about my, like, like my living situation and rent and all that stuff. And just you know, the cost of being a student and simply talking to someone else about my situation was a massive lift off my shoulders. And that's when I fell in love with like, I have to do this for other people because I mean, the people, when we, were, when we were working on this, um, in this program, it was volunteers to help students and community members understand their finances and understand their student loans and their debt and how to put a budget together. And, um, I think it was like 80% of students who went through that and met with a financial coach were, oh no, no, no it was people who met with a financial coach were 80% more likely to graduate. And so like to help people wow. stay on track, yeah, it was just, it was so cool. And so, yeah, that's why I have to do what I do. <laughs> well, I will say not in your industry, but in other industries that are similar where you dread the tax person or you dread, you know, you dread the dentist or you, you know, right. there's different industries that you kind of dread right. going, but, but you're right. It ends up they're the ones you love the most because you, 
you give people that ability to breathe and, and actually be able to do more. Right. Right. So what would you say, Taylor, were like your biggest tips for people that like somebody watching today might be feeling in, they, they dug themselves into a hole and they can't breathe. I think the first thing is actually just talking to someone about it. I mean, it doesn't even have to be me. It is just having those conversations because we don't talk about finance. We don't talk about money. Yeah. You normally don't have any kind of support system. Right. And so like starting to create that and support system. And it's the shame, right? There's shame. Yeah, because I think that money is something that we as a society has treated as if it should be common sense and it's not mm. so far from common sense it's absolutely insane that we don't learn this stuff in school to the degree that we should i mean we all learn to write checks but that's clearly not enough <laughs> and so uh yeah there is a lot of shame we feel like we're supposed to know better like we all know that's the thing though is we all know we should be saving we shouldn't have debt we all know we should invest we all know that we should budget but we don't do it, right? Because well, there's so many shiny things to buy. Exactly. <laughs> shiny shoes. And it's not <laughs> talked about like the sust. Saving and investing is not nearly as promoted as the amazing shoes that you're seeing and like the all the stuff like buying the home, getting the getting the cars, and like all the stuff is not nearly as I guess sexy as like putting stuff in a savings account. And I think that's the same for like honestly go tying back to the health stuff. Like we all know we should eat better. We all know we should fuel ourselves and eat fruits and vegetables, but like do we do it? Yeah. And so we, sometimes we need help. That's why we hire that coach. That's why we yeah. hire, a, you know, the people that are going to support us and finance is the exact same way. That's such a good point. Well, and I'm, I'm thinking a lot about the person that is, is hearing this and feeling like maybe, maybe they're seeing a shimmer of hope. Could you explain to everyone kind of what's your process, like the onboarding process? Like what would somebody do if they, what would it look like if they were to meet with you? Like what does yeah. that look like? So the process starts with understanding spending. And so what we're trying to do is figure out where spending has been going, which can be the hardest part for most people. This is the part where they hear that and they're like, ah, oh, maybe I don't want to do this anymore. Because confronting what you have been spending <laughs> can't be tough, right? Yeah, it's, it's reality. Fun. Real life reality isn't as fun. <laughs> well, I think about it, like, this is something I think unique to finance is that, like, that's such a necessary part. Whereas, like, you know, if they, they go meet with you as a health coach, you're not going to go through and show them how many calories they've had for the last year, right? Yeah. Like, you can't do that one. Really check that. But if they did, that's probably a horrifying prospect. Like, I don't want to know that. <laughs> But in finance, we do have the capability of figuring out what you spend because most people are not on a cash basis, right? And so understanding where you've been spending money is how we determine if you've been spending money in alignment with your values. Mm -hmm. If there is room to spend within values, sometimes there's not. Sometimes we are living paycheck to paycheck and getting the bare minimum, and that's, uh, that's a different process. But if there is room to spend in alignment with your values, we're looking at identifying, are those values showing up here or are you seeing wasteful spending? Wasteful spending being things that you have no idea where the money went. Mm -hmm. Looking at those transactions says, I, I don't know what that Amazon purchase was. I don't know what Walmart was. I don't know if it's groceries. I don't know if it's clothes. I don't know what it was. That's wasteful. And honestly, mm -hmm. the only stupid purchase you can make. There is no such thing as spending, stu spending in a dumb way unless it didn't bring you value or joy or some kind of benefit to your life. Mm -hmm. That's the only dumb purchases. Mm -hmm. Right? And so like helping identifying what those are and then so that you can adjust and make those changes to actually achieve the goals and the values that you want. And it is a personality test. Budgeting is the number one personality test you will ever take. Because you show me your budget, you show me your spending money, and I will show you what you value, right? Yeah. Or, or at least the reality of what it looks like you're valuing. And if it's not aligned with what your value is, maybe it's more of a motivating reason to make the change. Exactly. And so, like those people who are like, "Oh, that sounds like a horrible idea. I don't want to go over my budget with someone." It's it's probably because it's not in alignment with your values. Mm -hmm. And so, I want you to grasp onto that and just. Take the leap and say it's okay that I haven't been spending on my values. There's no shame in that. Most people are not taught how to do this, and most people don't even know what they value. So how are you supposed to know how to spend money in alignment with your values if you don't know what you value? Yeah. That's what a financial coach will do. That's so cool. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Another thing I want to point out when we met Taylor that I want to make sure everyone knows is how unique what you do is because you work for yourself. Yeah, so I'd love you to kind of explain to everyone just. 
it's so cool because like your your motive is so pure. You just want to help people breathe. You want to help people do as much as they want in their life financially. And there's no ulterior motive. Right. I'm glad you see the value in that because I do think it is incredibly valuable. So I, it is my own business. And so I don't have anything to sell except for education um, and my time. Um, and so I don't sell insurance. I don't take your investments. I don't tell you what to spend your money on. I don't tell you what to invest in. Like I have no, uh, I don't take commissions, kickbacks, referral fees. Um, I don't do any of that. And so like everything I'm giving you is information that is uh, relevant to your situation, but also is not going to benefit me, but only going to benefit you. So cool. How long do people typically, like your average client, how long do they typically work with you, would you say? Gosh, how long so, does the process take? You know, it's kind of all over the board. I think on average, it's about three months. Okay. So the first engagement that we do uh, is about one month long, and it is that process of figuring out what it is that you spend money on that you value, setting up a budget. Like, it's all like, it's not just the ooey gooey stuff of like, let's spend what you value. Like, we are going through a debt payoff plan, like understanding the numbers of like, hey, this is what's going to need to happen in order for you to reach your goals, your savings goals, your debt payoff goals. And then I help you implement the budget. So I help you either in the app of your choice, in the nifty spreadsheets I make, um, or most recently in Monarch Money is where I try to put most of my clients in. I help them create the app. Most people have tried a budgeting app and it doesn't work because a budgeting app is meant to support a good budget. But most people do not know how to put a good budget <laughs> together, right? <laughs> It's not supposed to create a budget. A budgeting app is not your solution. Downloading a budget app is not going to change your life. Knowing how to use one helps support the budget that you create. So after we create the budget, then I create the app that's going to support their support them while ongoing. So then they can decide whether to work with a coach to continue to hone in that process and stay accountable and just have someone to talk to and have that support system, or they can run off it on their own. And cool. I, you know, I hope they check in and tell me what they say. I mean, one of my clients just emailed me from uh, I last time I saw them was a year and a half ago. Uh, they were one of my first clients actually uh, for in my business for evolving money and they just messaged me saying that they just paid for their trip to uh, Europe uh, in cash and it was a trip that they worked on That's with me. So that was their plan cool. and they finally took it. It took them a year to save but yeah. like, that was one of the things that we were working for and it's just nice. it's cool to reap in those rewards. So. Well and how much more do you think they're going to enjoy that trip knowing that they saved for it? So and you know what I mean? Like they're because we've all had those well, I've had those trips where I'm like, I don't I don't really have the money for it, but I've already committed to my child. Yeah. We're going on this trip. Yes. And it's like you're just breathing. <laughs> I can do this. You know, we've all had those times where right. like we've over promised something and it's crazy. So yeah, I love it. I think it's and you can help people anywhere in the nation, right? Because mm -hmm. you do Zoom. You do most of your meetings through Zoom. So you're able to help anybody in the U.S. or really the world, right? Yep. Why not? Yep, exactly. And it's a lot easier on people's schedules, too, because I do a lot of screen share. I do show and demonstrate a lot of what we're doing. There's a lot of visuals, so I'm not just, like, talking at them for yeah. a few hours. It's definitely a lot easier over Zoom. So. That's good. Yeah, that's good. So we talked a little bit about – we. it was kind of cool. I never thought of, like – finances and health could be in the same arena. But when Taylor was explaining so much she did, I was like, I related with it so much. And so I would love us just to, for a few minutes, talk a little bit about how health and finances are actually so similar. Like what we do is different, right? but it's kind of the same end result, helping people be free from their addictions, mm -hmm. right? And like their unhealthy habits. Exactly. And so I would love, one thing I was sharing with you, the program that I coach with, um, it's called Optivia. Mm -hmm. And we do, um, we do eating plans for people while they're losing weight. And it's kind of like your tool you give is kind of like, if you were to just give somebody the steps what to do without a tool, how effective would they be? They don't. <laughs> they wouldn't do it. And so with this, it's like, it's kind of like those baby steps. Mm -hmm. And so I would love to hear your thoughts on like your, your clients that you work with, how much money they spend on food and like the crazy part about that. Yes. So, <laughs> you know, you're exactly right. Cause uh, it is so intertwined, not only in just like what we both do has a huge ripple effect on everything in life. Yeah. Finance and health are these just core pillars. 
Um, and so, yes, like when, when I'm working with my clients on their food, the biggest thing that uh, is probably the downfall for most budget is budgets are food. Almost everyone that's come to me has um, a very large budget for groceries and dining out. And it can be, it's just a source of pain for most clients because they feel like, oh, I shouldn't spend this much money on food. However, making the changes to reduce consumption in that way um, is hard because it is your meal prepping, it's your time, it's your energy, it's uh, the food that you're eating, the fuel that you're giving your body, like the types of food you're choosing all are going to be affected in this decision to spend less or more or to hone in that budget. And so uh, it does come down to health for a lot of people. It's um, Sometimes they feel like they need to spend more in order to be healthy. Some people don't spend as much as they should because they you know, try to eat healthy, but then they end up going out to eat because being healthy is kind of hard. Let's be honest, if you don't like to cook or if you don't have time. Well, I was the simple. queen of buying all the produce back in the day. Yes. And then spending, like, I'm going to eat healthy. And I would buy all the produce and all the healthy foods, but then I would go eat out with my friends and then we'd all go back in the fridge. Right. So it was like a double whammy. Right, exactly. Like double trouble. Exactly. And no, it's like, and one of those things, like, I mean, the, the food budget is really hard because there's always some kind of restriction to how they're eating, whether it's because it's like, uh, they can't eat gluten, they can't have dairy. Um, you know, I had one of my clients tell me that she has to eat out with her kids because that's the only time she could get her daughter to eat. She actually had an eating disorder. Aww. And so eating in the car and being distracted like that was the only way she could get her daughter to eat. Mm. And so like, do you think I'm going to tell them like they can't eat out? No. Like, <laughs> you say if, that, if that's what's working, like, and that's your situation, absolutely we need to work around and maybe find other things to focus on other than the food because there are other things you can do in your budget. Um, but like, I mean, people's restrictions in that way can be just a little difficult to work around. Yeah. Yeah. I just think it's fascinating because when you do something you're passionate about and you're helping people, is there anything better? No. You know what I mean? And we see the value, but the, the, the key is helping other people. And like today, I hope, I hope as you're listening, if you are feeling overwhelmed with your finances and you feel a little bit like you're trapped, like you literally feel like you're in jail for your finances and you can't breathe. Um, like Taylor's advice, I love what you said is just at least have a conversation, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And then you guys can decide if it's a good fit. You right. know what I mean? Like, is it, is your consultation free when the person initially talks to you? Yes, absolutely. It's free. Totally free. <laughs> so that conversation, it's like free. And then you decide if it's a good fit, you know? And that's the same thing I do. Like when I connect with somebody and I do like a health, a health, I like to call it a dream session, but it's essentially we're talking about your why and why it's important for you to get healthy. That's free. And I think of it, and I think Taylor would agree, I feel like it's a gift because I'm awakening them to their why and their intrinsic motivation behind what they want. So I'm truly giving people a gift for free. And then they can choose whether they want to work with me or not. Right. But it feels so good to me. Like, how do you feel that you get to like offer that to people? That initial it is amazing consultation because it's so much more than finances. Just like with you, it's so much more than diet, right? It's how you are, how much time you're spending with your kids, and the energy that you have to spend with your kids. It's how much. Um, effort you're putting into your job and your work or the ability to wake up in the morning and because you're actually getting the sleep you need. That's all coming from finances, which sounds like I'm talking about the health stuff. I, that's what I'm saying. They're like <laughs> one and the same. It's like such a similar feeling. I think when people are unhealthy with their finances or unhealthy with their health, it is a very similar feeling. Mm -hmm. And often it's both. Yes, absolutely. Because I mean, even going back to the food stuff, like when people start to realize what they can do with their budget as far as food goes, they realize that they can't actually afford to spend money on the food that, that actually fuels them. Yeah. Or the meal planning or the program to get them to that place. I mean, there's clients that, um, you know, might struggle with uh, some form of addiction or um, just bad habits, and they aren't able to move past those habits 
because there's a financial cost, um, whether it's rehab or a program, coaching program, or some cost that's upfront that's preventing them from making that steps to cut out some of the spending or to cut out some of those habits that they have. And if they are able to see the impact and like create a budget where they can actually afford that stuff, yeah. I mean, again, the ripple effect of like not only did we just help their finances, but we also just helped them move forward in their health goals and their progression towards yeah. their healthier life. So And it works exactly the same because if pe people that I'm interacting with, if they feel like they can't add anything onto their plate financially, but they want desperately to get healthy, and that's like their one barrier from changing their life if they if they could just take that leap of faith and like really delve into their finances they're going to have the money to do it absolutely you yeah. know what i mean so it's it's cool how that works it just makes me so excited for people so here's my a little like i'm going to put you on the spot a little bit i like to do that <laughs> it's not that bad just kidding but okay so i'm being a little i'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate let's yeah. say the person that needs to meet with you, they have negative $500 in their checking account. How are they supposed to pay you? So How are they supposed to do that? That's a really good question. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I love this question. Because I think people are thinking this. Yeah, right. They're like, well, great, but that sure <laughs> costs money, and I have negative $500 right now. So. Well, for one, I, those free consultations, I'm not just like in a position where I'm asking questions and I'm like, well, this program is perfect for you. Like, I am actually helping you in those free consultations. Like, we will go over your biggest stressors and I will give you information. I had a client sign up with me. Um, she did their free consult. She signed up, but she ended up like backing out a second because she couldn't afford it. Yeah. And so I was like, you know, let's take a look at what's going on. Like, let's figure out what's happening. I looked at her budget. Because she did the homework to start out with. Like, she was so ready to be there, but she was last minute, she couldn't afford it. Yeah. I looked at her budget, and she was paying uh, well over $1,000 a month in auto insurance. And I know from a financial coaching standpoint, based on her family size and the car she had and all this stuff, that was too high. Oh. So I referred her to a friend, actually, you would know him. Um, and then he got her auto rate down to $500 a month, which is what my fee is. She immediately saved her so $500 cool. a month. That's so That's like, so cool. <laughs> My clients get well above and beyond what my fee is, and that's oh. why I charge it. Like, I've I'm seen so it glad. consistently, and so, like, even, like, those first meetings, I have clients that do their homework the first time, and they will save anywhere before they even meet with me. So, like, actually, okay, they've met with me once, and then they sign up for a coaching program. They do their homework before, which is gathering their expenses. Before they even have that first meeting, they have already found anywhere from $100 to $1,000 a month in subscriptions, forgotten stuff, like bills that they forgot to like pause or negotiate, things that they decided that they want to cut out before they even meet with me. And that's well over what my fee is. That's so cool. I even do a thousand, I did a thousand dollar challenge, save a thousand dollars in six days challenge just this weekend um inside this course that i have and um so even even then like being able to save a thousand dollars with a whole bunch of different strategies and this challenge is free too like you get six days of videos to help you save money increase income um start saving and again that's paying for my fee so like i really do try to get that value that's time. so cool <laughs> i love it taylor see this is why i wanted you guys all to get the get the magic of taylor because <laughs> Honestly, if if you have even one inkling of feeling like I should talk to Taylor, you just should because why not allow yourself to breathe? Why not allow yourself to have that freedom and then get to do the things you want to do? And it's pretty cool. So do you have any like parting tips or advice to the person watching? You know, one of the things that we talked about and I wanted to make sure I added and touched on was just those tips around the food stuff because I know that is one of the biggest uh, hang-ups in a lot of people's budgets. Um, most of my clients are spending well over what they probably is within a, like a healthy range of food. And again, there's a lot of reasons for that. That could be reasons that we don't want to cut out. It could be reasons for your health stuff. However, most almost every single one of my clients i recommend um meal prepping food service or getting on a program that's going to uh provide those meals for you something like what mandy offers yeah. it's way cheaper than what most people are actually spending on their grocery budget if you do stop going to the grocery store in addition to services. <laughs> like what i used to do <laughs> And so, um, you know, if that is something that is like a hang up in your budget, um, one, maybe 
really focusing on eating what's in your pantry and cleaning out your pantry. Not knowing what's in your pantry is causing a buildup in food that is going to go to waste and you don't actually know what's available to eat. There's so much crap in those pantries and you're like, there's nothing here to eat, right? If you're like that, you need to eat it down. So like, get it, clean <laughs> it out. Your pantry should be close. Like obviously there's your baking supplies that'll never go away. But like the stuff that you are eating all the time, try to clean that out before you go grocery shopping. Force yourself to eat that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So that you, one, have less clutter. Yeah. You know how to meal prep and it will save you money. And so, uh, I love yeah, that. Like, That's like such a good tip. <laughs> Seriously. Like, cause yeah, if you're, if you're feeling a little strapped, it's like eat, eat the food you have. Yeah. You know? And it's not like a thing that, it doesn't mean that you are, a lot of people just have a hard time with like, putting together food. I mean, in this day and age, you really do either need to hire a meal prepping or a meal service, or you need to learn how to cook. Yeah. It's not an option anymore. Like, especially just with how high prices are creeping up and uh, especially going out to eat, that is creeping up. If you hate cooking and you don't know how, that's not an option anymore. You have to figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> Or you have to sacrifice something else. Right, exactly. You know? Yeah, if you really hate it, which I you know I work with a lot of business owners, they don't have time to cook. That's totally fine. But that means that they are sacrificing in other areas like clothes or even their housing or you know whatever it is. It's all again going back to your values and yeah. what is the most important to you. And that's gonna be completely custom to you. And to me, to me, I, I feel like that's where the click will happen for somebody when they're doing it for something they want. Mm -hmm. And I feel I love it that that's kind of where you start. Because yeah. I feel like that's setting them up for success. And that's the same thing like with me. I, I start with their why. Like why why do we want to create this abundant life? And then they're motivated from right. the beginning rather than they're nervous. Exactly. They're nervous equally. I think we both make people nervous. <laughs> but that's okay because they end up loving us and they end up saying we changed their lives. So it's good. So exactly. Taylor, I love this. Thank you so much for taking the time for everyone to get to just at least maybe take that first step of like admitting that maybe, maybe you're going to need help. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I mean, just like I don't think people judge anyone for getting a personal trainer or getting a health coach. Like that's yeah. so like celebrated yeah. and you're like, there's shame around being a financial coach. Yeah. Or therapy. Like therapy. some people are like ashamed of therapy. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it's, to, it's self care. Mm -hmm. It's, it's making you be able to give more. Yes. It so. is such a benefit. So yes, thank you for having me. This of course. Was so fun. I'm so glad. Well, everyone have a beautiful day. Take care. Thank you. Awesome. Yay. All right. Do we clap really loud so it knows when we stop? <laughs> we did. Yay. We did good. That's <laughs> great. Was that like, I mean, did that touch on yeah. everything? You, yeah. Like, it did. There's not. It's great. It's perfect. I really just want people, I want to give value to people in different topics. You know, they're just Let's do a little, um, I